Hey everybody, I'm your Desmo 21 Drawing and Color Instructor Yu Hao Jiang. Welcome to our first Color Theory Lecture. In this video, the first question we're going to discuss is how do we see colors? This question has to be answered in two parts. First, what are colors? And secondly, how do we humans see colors? Color is said to be contained within light, but the perception of color takes place in the mind. Light travels through space with a wave-like motion. The distance between two successive peaks of the wave is called wavelength. Different wavelengths of light appears to our eyes as different colors. Here is a spectrum of the visible light to our human eyes. You can see each color zone contains more gradients than the mind can distinguish. Additionally, a wide range of wavelengths are invisible to us such as X-rays, infrared, and UV lights. Now we know that color is contained within light, let's talk about how our eyes see these lights. The perception of colored surface is caused by the reflection of light from those surfaces to the eye. A ray of light can contain a combination of lights of different wavelengths. Here, I'm sure lots of you have seen this Pink Floyd album cover. This image illustrates an optical phenomena called dispersion. A triangular prism can disperse a ray of white light into its constituent spectrum of colors, creating an effect similar to a rainbow. Here, this lemon appeared to be yellow because its molecule reflect yellow wavelengths. Light waves that are not reflected are not perceived as color. In reality, a surface can predominantly reflect yellow, but also subtly reflect all the other colors. That's why sometimes we see a greenish lemon or an orangish lemon. The next idea I'd like to bring up here is the two different methods of producing color, additive and subtractive. Additive color process is basically how different colored lights are combined. Imagine on a theater set, Combining two spotlights would add luminosity or brightness. The three primary colors of the visible light spectrum are red, green, and blue, also known as the primary triad or RGB. In theory, red, yellow, and blue are indivisible. Conversely, all other colors can be made from two or more colors of the primary triad. Mixing different amounts of red, green, and blue produces the secondary triad, yellow, cyan, and magenta. And when all three of them are mixed, we get white. If we look up closely to a TV screen or a computer monitor, notice red, yellow, and blue are the only color pixels produced. That's why when we create images in Illustrator or Photoshop for the purpose of digital distribution, we work in the RGB color mode. In contrast to additive colors, Subtractive colors are created by completely or partially absorbing some light waves and reflecting others. Think about when we mix pigments, they tend to produce duller and darker colors. This is because the reflection and absorption of color in pigment are never absolutely pure. The more colors we blend together, the less color wavelengths are reflected. When we print photos, posters, or magazines, we're dealing with subtractive color. Cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, or CMYK, are the four basic colors used for printing color images. When we produce images for the purpose of printing, it's preferable to work in CMYK color mode. Now, after discussing how we see colors, I want to introduce some terminologies that can help us describe colors. Hue, value, and saturation are the three distinct fundamental factors that account for all colors appearance. When we refer to a color on the spectrum by its name, we're referring to its hue. For example, when we say yellow, we're referring to the hue of a color. However, if we think of the color spectrum as a continuum of infinite hues, the word yellow can mean so many different colors. The idea of a true red, blue, and yellow is an impossible abstraction that can only exist in our mind. Value signifies the relative lightness or darkness of a color. Another word for it is luminosity. 
Black and white photographs eliminate hue and saturation, leaving only value. Here we have a David Hockney painting, and the image on the right shows only the value of the painting's colors. For the past two weeks, we've been only working with black and white. In a way, we've been only working with the value of colors. Saturation refers to the relative purity of color. High saturation colors look rich and full. Low saturation colors look dull and grayish. Here, this diagram shows us how hue, saturation, and value intersect to create colors. In painting software like Illustrator or Photoshop, we can use the HSB or Hue Saturation Brightness model to modify colors. The last thing I like to talk about is color schemes. Color schemes describe a fixed set of hue relationships. But may include all possible variations in value and saturation. Here are some most common color schemes. Monochromatic means one hue. This painting by the American Abstract Expressionist painter Mark Rothko is an example of a monochromatic color scheme. It is composed of a series of warm reds that range in saturation from a vivid, nearly prismatic red at the bottom. To the many subtle variations of red-brown that dominate the center, what is so interesting is that if we look at only the value of this painting, they are all similar dark. In a way, the most dramatic contrast is clearly not in hue or value, but in saturation. Analogous color scheme uses colors that reside adjacent to each other, or the colors. That are within 30 degrees apart on the color wheel. Analogous hues should go beyond one color, but include only colors that share a hue. Make sure you have enough contrast when you choose an analogous color scheme. Here is an 1899 painting by Claude Monet, whose work focused on capturing the effect that changing light and atmospheric conditions have on the color of objects. As a result, many of his paintings utilize the analogous color scheme, and you can see they create a sense of harmony and cohesion. Complementary color schemes are the two hues that fall directly opposite each other on the color hue, or 180 degrees apart. When complementary hues are placed next to each other, their contrast generates strong visual energy and excitement. Here is a painting from the Chinese painter Zhao Guoqi's triptych *June October* that utilizes blue-orange complementary hues. Triadic color schemes are any three hues that lie equally spaced on the color wheel, or in other words, 120 degrees apart. Successful usage of the palette provides a rich balance and harmonious style that the others can achieve. Here, American artist Nancy Kroes quilt. Demonstrates a dramatic use of the primary triad red, yellow, and blue. For this week's assignment, I'd like you all to experiment with each of these color schemes at least once in your digital compositions. In this week's Illustrator tutorial video, I will also show you ways to make your own color swatches for different color schemes. That's all for my basic color theory lecture. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video, and I will see you soon. Bye.